the very first step to begin your organization's data protection compliance will be to hire or appoint a data protection officer, also known as a DPO. So regardless if you're a small business or a large MNC, as long as you collect, use or disclose personal data to provide a product or service, you need to appoint a data protection officer. It's mandatory. As quoted by PDPC's Deputy Commissioner, an organization with a highly placed professional DPO may well avoid a finding that it has violated the PDPA even though there was a data breach. Okay, so why is this so? Basically, PDPC wants to see accountability in organizations okay, that they value okay, personal data under their care. Firstly, they've appointed a okay, well-trained DPO. Okay, he has the knowledge, he has implemented all the necessary data protection measures, SOPs, okay, developed the policies and procedures, made aware of all these policies to their staff and employees, done regular risk assessments, okay, and then unfortunately, even though there was a data breach, when the PDPC performs an investigation, okay, they find and they determine that this company has done all they can within reasonable means okay, to be compliant to the PDPA. But yet, there was still a data breach. So PDPC may very well just offer them a warning instead of a financial penalty. Can any gaps identified through this breach to have a plan in place to quickly cover them? So these are some questions that businesses need to ask themselves. Who should they appoint as a DPO? How can they get the DPO trained? Can they consider outsourcing? And what is a DPO's responsibilities? So first, most of the times, a company it should take time to properly assess the most suitable person to take on this DPO role. And this should be someone of a senior role or managerial position. So to get a well-trained DPO, of course, a company must send that personnel to a data protection course. And yes, PDPC understands that many SMEs have manpower or resource constraints, so companies can outsource the operational aspects of a data protection officer to an external service provider. And what is a DPO's responsibilities? We'll be taking a look at this in the next slide. So these are the points that a data protection officer must know okay, how to do, what to do, and implement them. So firstly, a DPO must develop and implement the necessary data protection policies and processes in the company. He has to foster a data protection culture and provide in-house training to his employees. Okay. He must communicate the necessary data protection policies that has been set up and ensures that employees okay, are following through on these SOPs in their day-to-day -day operations. He must know how to perform risk assessments and alert management for any potential risks. A DPO is also the main point of contact to handle personal data queries and complaints. Okay, this can be from the public when someone, when the customer wants to perform a access request. So a DPO should be the one leading this. And last but not least, a DPO is the one who liaises with PDPC on any data protection matters. Importantly, businesses also want to know what are the penalties that can be incurred if they are found to not be compliant to the PDPA or if there's a data breach. So first, PDPC can enforce that the business stop collecting, using or disclosing personal data PDPC can also mandate that the business destroy the personal data in their care or to comply with any direction that is deemed fit by PDPC. Regarding financial penalty, as of now, the maximum amount is 1 million Singapore dollars and per each do not call breach, that means if a business doesn't check the do not call registry and makes a phone call to a Singapore telephone number that's already registered, each breach is liable up to $10,000. Last but not least, okay, a company can be involved in legal proceedings. So here, we'll be taking a look at some of the 
bigger names that have come out in the news recently regarding data breaches. Example, Grab, the transportation app, was fined $16,000 over a data breach. Okay, and they have been investigated three times. AIA, in the insurance industry, they were fined $10,000. Spice, an F&B establishment, they were fined $20,000 when 100 of their customers' personal data were leaked. Singtel was fined $25,000 and Ninja Van $90,000 for data breach. Chan Brothers Travel, okay, they were under investigation by PDPC. Even UOB, okay, someone complained, okay, they took a picture okay, of unstranded documentation they okay, found behind the building. And then they are under investigation by the PDPC. Okay, a local firm okay, was warned when one of the directors okay, disclosed personal and sensitive data of an ex-employee into a group chat, a WhatsApp group chat of more than 50 employees. Okay, and last but not least, Propnex okay, in the real estate industry was fined $10,000. So here are some examples that we took a screenshot okay, from the enforcement page of PDPC's website. Okay, we just go through some examples. You can see at the top for Honours B, a financial penalty of $8,000 was imposed because about 8,000 individuals' okay, personal data was stored in the cloud without access restrictions. This means that almost anyone or any employee okay, will be able to access okay, this information stored in the cloud. So many businesses okay, may be guilty of this. Let's say if you store customers' personal data or your employees' personal data in the cloud, can be Dropbox, can be Google Drive. And if you do not set in place okay, the proper hierarchy for the access management and restrictions, any employee, for example, with your, the working email domain, can access the same data. Okay, next, we'll take a look at the chisel. Okay, they will impose the $8,000 fine. Okay, why? Okay, because they failed to put in place reasonable security arrangements to protect its users from its mobile application. There was the travel cooperation, $12,000. Okay, they failed to appoint a DPO. Saturday Club, failed to put in place written policies and practices. We have the Society of Tourist Guides also failed to appoint a DPO. They will find $20,000. So, so across most of the examples, you can see at the very first place, if an organization did not appoint a DPO, then subsequently, all the other responsibilities okay, and obligations to the PDPA will not be done as well. It's because it is the DPO's responsibility to spearhead okay, the PDPA compliance efforts of the company. Okay, what this screen shows is basically from a report, one of the enforcement uh, cases on PDPC's website. Okay, there was a company that had been investigated and financially penalized. They lost a portable hard disk containing 18,630 individuals' personal data. Okay, so why am I showing this? It's because a lot of businesses like to ask, is it only for those B2B businesses? Okay, sorry, B2C businesses okay, that need to comply to the PDPA? Okay, the answer is no. Regardless if you're a B2C business or your B2B business, okay, you would have both internal staff personal data and external stakeholders, for example, your customers. So in this case, you can see that they have also suppliers' personal data, which was should be initially considered BCI, business contact information. As you can see, company address, okay, email address, mobile number, office number. Okay, which is by right, BCI is not under the PDPA. But because that this hard disk was lost, and now the third party or the stranger who picks up the hard disk who is in possession will be able to accurately identify okay, the individuals through the personal data found. Next, even employees, okay, your internal staff, okay, their name, office email address and office phone number okay, will be considered as 
personal data as well. And you can see even prospective customers. So it's not only just customers. In this slide, we'll be talking about seven mistakes most organizations make. First, insufficient data protection measures. Okay, this can be for both physical and digital data. So if a company doesn't have any of these measures in place to properly protect and secure the data, okay, they may find that they are very vulnerable to accidental disclosure, theft, or data breach due to hacking incidents. Little or no information security practices. This is similar to the first point, okay, but this with regards to IT. So through the handling of personal data via usage of certain software, if no proper practices and SOPs are set, okay, a data breach can occur. Moving on to point three, vulnerable IT infrastructure to online threats. Okay, for any business that has a web platform, a mobile app, okay, or even simply a contact form on their website. But if they do not perform regular penetration testing or they do not perform vulnerability assessments, okay, they may not know that they are actually already compromised and that a malicious perpetrator already has access to the personal data. Next, improper training or policies not communicated. So if any staff okay, is not properly trained or is not aware of the policies, okay, of the data protection policies that needs to be followed in their day-to-day -day operations, then a data breach can occur. Disjointed practice, this will be for bigger organizations if you have different departments or you have multi-office locations. So if there's a discrepancy in the data protection practices being carried out at different places, okay, then yes, a data breach can happen as well. Complacency, okay, for those businesses that do not value data protection, okay, or they think that the personal data under their care is only very little, or they think they are a B2B company, Okay, so as long as there's a complaint by a customer to PDPC or a data breach happens, okay, because they did not do anything or they've done very little and PDPC investigates, that's when okay, there will be reputational loss and also a financial penalty incurred. And last but not least, trusting third parties and poor contracts. So we are aware that there's actually a lot of companies who outsource their software developments, mobile apps, or even their corporate websites okay, to overseas vendors. Okay, why? Maybe because it's cheaper okay, to engage these vendors who are based overseas. So if you do have an overseas vendor, okay, you have to ensure that they comply okay, to Singapore's PDPA okay, standards or its equivalent. So you need to have a contract in place to get them to sign off to say that yes, okay, they comply to our PDPA standards or more. And so if a data breach happens, okay, and everything you have, you have done on your part to ensure that data under your care is well secured, okay, and is transferred properly, but a data breach happens on their end, okay, on the vendor's end, for example, okay, then you are safe and most of the liability is pushed to them and you are covered. So how do we help businesses? Okay, we have our PDPA audit and compliance. So we perform audits for our clients, on-site physical audits and cyber audits. We offer DPO as a service. So this is a outsourced DPO service whereby businesses can engage us to be a designated DPO, whereby we'll register with PDPC for them and also help them draft the necessary policies, procedures and documentation to get them compliant. We conduct PDPA consultancy and training so this will be the very first step for businesses to send their staff down to understand the full nine core obligations, the DNC provisions, to then go back to the company and then know actually what's at stake and what they need to start doing. We also have a data protection software whereby we are able to prevent any personal data from being exported from any endpoint, keep on being sent out. So feel free to contact us for a non-obligatory consultation on how we can help your business. We have come to the end of this video. I hope that you have gained newfound knowledge or at least better understand 
your PDPA obligations or your rights as an individual. We would appreciate if you can also follow or like our Facebook page, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube channel. And if this video was indeed helpful for you, do like and share our video and subscribe to our channel for similar informative videos in future. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.